In this lesson, we'll discuss the optimized performance improvements in V-Ray Next for Rhino, as well as smart new tools we have integrated to speed up your workflow. We'll start with covering how to use the new NVIDIA AI Denoiser for faster look development, and then move on to discuss new GPU features for production such as bucket rendering, and then how to denoy separate render elements. In V-Ray Next, we have incorporated the brand new NVIDIA AI Denoiser, which uses an artificial intelligence-based denoising algorithm to estimate what the image should look like without the noise. It does this very fast, so it is very useful for developing your scene and getting an interactive preview as quickly as possible. To enable the NVIDIA AI Denoiser, let's open up the V-Ray Asset Editor, and in the Render Rollout, toggle on the Denoise option. Now, in the right-hand Flyout menu, expand the Denoiser Rollout menu. You'll see that the default setting is the V-Ray Denoiser. To change it, click the arrow for the drop-down menu, and then switch over to the NVIDIA AI Denoiser. Keep in mind that the AI Denoiser only works with NVIDIA GPUs, regardless of whether you're rendering on CPU or GPU. Now, before we start the interactive render, let's set the update frequency parameter to 100. This will ensure that the Denoiser updates as quickly as possible. I'm also going to use V-Ray GPU as my render engine, since I've set up this scene to use GPU specifically. All right, now let's start an interactive render. As you can see, the image clears out quite quickly, giving us a nice preview of our scene. Right now, the scene is lit only by an image in the environment slot. To change that, let's head to the Lights tab in the Asset Editor and turn on the Dome Light labeled Environment Light, which contains an HDR to give us some nice image-based lighting. Now we'll see the NVIDIA AI Denoiser kicks in very quickly and clears up the image, showing us the scene with much more clarity. Let's switch perspectives to a few other views we have set up here. And again, observe how quickly the denoiser gives us a sense of the scene. We can even compare the difference the denoiser makes between the raw and denoised image, simply by clicking the Switch to RGB Channel option in the frame buffer. OK, now that we've got a good sense of our scene thanks to the AI denoiser, let's go ahead and stop the render and then head to the Settings tab again. All right, next, let's discuss a few new features in V-Ray Next for production rendering. In V-Ray Next, we've added some brand new production features for GPU rendering, including the option to use the bucket sampling method on GPU. Bucket rendering gives us certain advantages in that it generally renders faster than progressive mode when rendering at higher settings for production, whereas progressive rendering is more effective for interactive previews. Bucket rendering also improves distributed rendering performance and helps to cut down on network traffic. Hybrid rendering on both CPU and GPU simultaneously is also improved. To demonstrate rendering with buckets on GPU, let's first switch from the AI Denoiser to the default V-Ray Denoiser. While the AI Denoiser is great for interactive previews, when it comes to animations, recompositing the beauty pass, or general production rendering, we recommend switching to the V-Ray default denoiser since it's more accurate. Let's also toggle off interactive rendering so we're rendering for production and disable the progressive mode toggle to switch to the bucket rendering mode on GPU. The default settings here for the bucket mode are going to work fine in our case, so let's leave them as they are. Next, let's click on the three dots icon next to the GPU engine to view the Select Devices dropdown. Here, we can choose which GPU devices to use for rendering. I have also included my CPU here to take advantage of hybrid rendering. If you have more than one GPU, you may want to consider leaving one of your GPU devices free for working on the monitor and UI display. For this scene, I'm going to use both of my GPUs and CPU to render more quickly. Okay, let's start a production render using buckets on GPU. After the light cache finishes its calculations, we'll see the buckets appear for the GPU and the CPU. V-Ray analyzes the hardware available in advance and automatically sets the correct optimal bucket size. Okay, now you've seen how with the ability to take advantage of bucket rendering on GPU, V-Ray Next enables you to get final images faster than ever. Next, let's explore how to denoise separate render elements in V-Ray Next. To start, enable the denoiser again if you have not already, and then let's switch it to the V-Ray default denoiser. The V-Ray default denoiser is consistent across render elements, 
making it a better choice for recompositing the beauty pass, as well as for denoising animations. All right, now let's head to the Render Elements tab and add the render elements necessary to reconstruct the RGB beauty pass. While holding the Control key, we can select multiple render elements that we need from the dropdown. In this case, the GI, Lighting, Reflection, Refraction, and Specular. Now, let's first take a look at what these elements normally look like without denoising applied to them. I'm going to start a render of the image and then save it to the VFB for comparison. Okay, now that we've saved the image to the VFB, let's see how we can do another render while separately denoising each individual render element. Vire Next denoises in a way that makes recompositing the beauty pass noise free without creating any artifacts making denoising more useful in a post-production workflow. In order to denoise specific render elements, we can click on each and simply enable the denoise checkbox like so. This way, we'll not only have a denoised beauty pass, but each render element will be denoised as well and contain only its portion of denoising. Note that in order to denoise the render elements, Viri needs to completely finish the render first, and then it can denoise each individual render element. As a result, Make sure that you're rendering for production rather than interactive mode, and then you can start a render. Okay, when the render is done, you'll see that V-Ray automatically switches to the effects result pass in the VFB. Let's save the render now to our history, and then do a quick A-B comparison with our previous render. Switching to the GI element, you'll see that on the right, the original render's GI is noticeably noisier, whereas the denoise GI on the left is very smooth. I'll demonstrate this for the other render elements we added as well for comparison. Altogether, denoising separate render elements using V-Ray Next gives you additional control and flexibility in post-production, so you can recomposite the denoised beauty pass without having to worry about artifacts.